Right, so the, what I'd like to do this afternoon, obviously there's a, a, a huge amount when it comes to uh, talking about end times and uh, people make reference to different things. The end of the world, the second coming of Jesus, the rapture of the church, and there's a, a, a lot of lingo around these, around these things. And so I'm not going to go into uh, the technical details in terms of timing and events, but rather give us a, a, a brief overview in terms of the times we're currently living in. And I'm sure you'll all agree with me, we're living in what the Bible calls perilous times. Um, there's no doubt we're in the last days. Uh, the things that we're seeing taking place on a global scale uh, are very clearly mapped out in Scripture. The environment we're currently in, in this country, uh, is getting progressively worse. Um, we, we trust that God would intervene. Uh, if not, it's just going to go from bad to worse. Mm. And that's, that's the reality. And yet globally, it's like that. So uh, we, we're not going to be spared certain things. Um, we're going to go through some very, very difficult times. That's just a fact. And through all these things, all that really matters is whether we know Jesus Christ. And we have this picture, there are many pictures in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament. We consider Joseph being taken into uh, that foreign land, having been betrayed and sold by his brothers for 20 pieces of silver. And he's taken by uh, these Egyptians and he's, he's uh, sold into slavery. He's faithful in Potiphar's house, then falsely accused of trying to uh, rape Potiphar's wife, put in prison, abandoned in prison. But yet through all that time he's faithful. And ultimately he's made to be the second most powerful man in the known world in Egypt at that time. And it was God's plan and purpose for him to go through all that, experience all that, so he could find himself in Pharaoh's house, as it were, at that time, because there was a, there was a famine coming upon that land. And there were seven years of plenty, and they store up for the seven lean years which were to come. And all that mattered during those lean years uh, for the children of Israel was whether you knew Joseph. And Joseph is a picture of Christ, is he not? Mm -hmm. yes. Also betrayed by his own brothers, uh, sold for 30 pieces of silver, not, not 20 as it was with, with Joseph. Also falsely accused, put in prison for something that, uh, that he didn't do. And in one day goes from prison to second most powerful man in the world, Joseph, and so Jesus in one day uh, is raised and given a name that is above every other name. And so for us, uh, all that matters is whether we know Jesus Christ. Because of the relationship the Jews had, his brothers had with Joseph, they were spared uh, what took place during that famine. And let me tell you, folks, there's a famine that's coming upon this land. And there's a famine that's coming upon the world. And it's not a famine, the Bible says, of food, but it's a famine of the Word of God. And people are abandoning the Word of God. We look in our own country, how, how so many false prophets are arising. Yeah. And, and the, the false promises, the false hope, the money uh, scams that, that are going on. And many are becoming disillusioned. And the church is no longer offering men and women the bread of life, yes. which is Jesus Christ. And we've got to come back to the truth of God's word. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the mouth of God. So what I'm wanting to do this afternoon is just leave us with a challenge this weekend. And so, is the world going to end? And we're going to give place for, for questions at the end of each session. But here's the reality, the world is going to end. Mm. That's what the Bible teaches. And do we know that specific date? No, we don't. But what we do know is that the end is, the end is near. And so when we have a look on the next slide, we, we see that there were many uh, secular 
predictions. And these are, uh, for example, Christopher Columbus, um, the Mayans, Nostradamus, and then obviously modern science. So when's the world going to end? About six billion years from now. So if, if you're a modern scientist, um, then you've got plenty of time. Amen? You'll be all right. But the reality is, many people have predicted the end of the world. There was a big thing, remember around the Mayan calendar? 2012, and everyone was gearing up for this thing, and it came and it went, nothing happened. Then there are religious uh, predictions, and various popes uh, predicted the, the end of the world. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, you know that they predicted the second coming of Christ nine times. And nine times they were obviously wrong. I remember 1994 working with a man who had sold everything and uh, given everything away and they were waiting. And this guy at the time was in his, I think he was about 67 or, 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 or something like that, years old. And having sold everything, Jesus didn't come, mm. as they were told. And this poor guy had to come back to work, having cashed in his policies, his retirement, the works. Totally disillusioned, bitter and angry uh, as a result of uh, these kind of predictions. And so we know Herbert Armstrong and all these people. Harold Campion is one that you'll remember. Recently, in fact, there was a group in Johannesburg who also cashed in, sold everything. They used all their money globally to put campaigns, TV, radio campaigns. They splashed on the sides of buses. Um, that, 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 that was one such advert that they put out. They spent tens of millions of US dollars proclaiming this day. And it came and it went, and nothing happened. Mm. And so there are a lot of people in the world today that have been disillusioned by date setters. Now, folks, the Bible is very clear. God does not give us a date, mm. but He gives us signs whereby we can know that the end is, is near. If God gave us a date, knowing how we are, mm. or knowing how I am, you know, I would do whatever and then the day before I would go and make right to every relationship and set everything in order and sort everything out. It wouldn't, wouldn't we do that? Yeah. That's how we are as people. And so God knowing that doesn't give us a date because the scripture says today is the day of salvation. Every day we need to be ready. Every day we need to be living as if Jesus could be returning at any at any moment. And so the awesome thing is, is and, and the challenge to us, is how are you living? Mm. Are you living like Jesus is coming away in the future? Or are you living as though Jesus could come today? And so again, many religious predictions. Then many Christians also predicted uh, the rapture of the church and you think particularly of Hal Lindsey. I don't know who read that book, The Late Great Planet Earth. That became very popular in the 80s. And he worked out it was going to be a generation and uh, 40 years uh, from when Jesus made that declaration, those, you know, speaking to the children of Israel, and they said from the time Israel became a nation again, May 1948. Uh, there would be 40 years, a generation, and then Jesus would come. And everyone geared up for, 90, for, for 1988. I don't know how many of you folk may have uh, read the book and been disillusioned by that at the time, but that day came in it and, and nothing happened. And then it was the year 2000 and all these things. So secular, religious, and even well-known Christians and, and solid Christians, well-known Bible authors, uh, have, have been wrong by virtue of setting dates. But again, no one knows the day or the, or the hour. And so there will be many such things that will come and go. Uh, every year, something, something happens and you know, there, there are date setters and many people make a lot of cash by writing books um, because everyone wants to know when it's going to happen. But on the next slide, we're just looking at 
And I'm not sure exactly who put this together, but there are many biblical prophecies. And, and very quickly, you can have a look at, these are some of the prophecies concerning Jesus. And when, they were, when the prophecy was brought and the fulfillment of that prophecy. Now, it, it kind of works like this. You know, if you said there would be a, a, a boy child who was going to be born, well, you could prophesy that you've got a 50% chance. It's either a boy or a girl. Yeah. Okay? But then if you said that it's going to be a boy and he'll be born in a certain town, Bethlehem, well, tens of thousands of boys have been born in Bethlehem, but it does narrow it down a little bit more. But there would be uh, these wise men that would bring gifts. And more than that, there would be a sign in the heavens yes. declaring his birth. And more than that, he, the, the children at that time would be persecuted uh, by, by Herod. And, and you can continue, and as you add just these, just these prophecies in themselves, if for those to be fulfilled, there's one in a ten to the power of 28 probability. That's basically improbable. It, it could never happen. And yet, it happened. So we, we've got to conclude that the Bible is the most accurate book that we have as humanity. There is no other book as accurate as the Bible. I can't think of one. Uh, Nostradamus, many prophecies, very general type prophecies. You could read into that, you could speculate. But the Bible is the most accurate book. You know, a lot of people say there's discrepancies and, 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 and this kind of thing in, in the scriptures. Well, I don't know, maybe you're sitting in a pub and, and that's how guys chat and that's the statement that's made and people just believe some odd statement but haven't actually gone and verified the facts. Because like, some people have taken the time to verify the facts. One such man was Josh McDowell. And I think most people are ignorant as to the accuracy of the Bible. Mm. And folks, maybe that's our fault as Christians because what we portray to the world maybe isn't a very accurate reflection of who Jesus really is. And so God help us that we live a life that is worthy of the testimony of Jesus because for most people, the only Bible they're going to read is you and I. Mm. True? Yeah. They're not going to take the time to verify. They're not going to take the time to examine these scriptures. True. God help us that we become the best evidence in this world as to the accuracy of, of Scripture. And so on the next slide, there's an image that Daniel uh, interpreted for King Nebuchadnezzar. You can read about this in the book of Daniel chapter 2. And it was an image of a head of gold and a chest and arms of silver and loins of bronze and legs that were iron and then feet that were part iron and part clay and then there were ten toes. Nebuchadnezzar dreamed this dream and then couldn't remember what he dreamt when he woke up. But it bugged him to the point where he called all the wise men that were in his kingdom. And Daniel was a Jew who had been taken captive during the, the, the exile, and was now living in Babylon, had been trained in all the sciences, and he goes before God. Because if they could not tell the king what he had dreamt, and the interpretation, they were going to lose their lives. Now how do you interpret a dream? The man doesn't even tell you what he dreamt. Yeah. But God revealed this. Yeah. In fact, the revelation was this, you, O king, are the head of gold. But after you will come an inferior nation. Mm. And there will be two kings. The Medes and the Persians. And then after them a further inferior kingdom. The Greek Empire. And after that a further in inferior kingdom. The Roman Empire. Mm. And then it would come to the feet where there would be a whole mix. Some strong and some weak iron and clay. And then in the end, there would be ten kings that will arise. Coming out of the ten would be one. Who would be the world's final emperor. Which the Bible calls the Antichrist. Yeah. And then there was this stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands. Mm. And the stone came and it smashed the feet 
And then this entire image was reduced to rubble, ground to dust, and blown away by the wind. And then that stone swelled, and it filled the whole earth. Now you can read this in the book of Daniel. God further uh, uh, confirms this vision by these various animals. And folks, this is history. Daniel speaks up to the time of the Roman Empire. John in the book of Revelation, some 800 years later, he looks back, confirms what Daniel saw, and speaks to the future. And he's writing at the time of the Roman, the Roman Empire. Scripture is unbelievably accurate. Mm. The most incredible detail. And this is the history of the world. You can read in any secular library on the planet, maybe a bar a few uh, secular universities in the Middle East, where they've eliminated this history. But everywhere else you can read this history and it will tell you that there was a man called Nebuchadnezzar yeah. who ruled the Babylonian Empire. And there were the Medes and the Persians, Darius the Mede, Cyrus the Persian. And after him was the Greek Empire under Alexander the Great and that's where the four leopards, that there was a leopard with four heads, he had four generals that took over after him. And then the Roman Empire which never ceased to exist, but just slowly became weakened. To the point where we are now, where it's some strong and some weak, and we're living at the time where we're about to see the revelation of ten kings. Whether those are ten men or ten empires, we can only speculate, but ten will arise. And folks, every single one of these things has happened to the very detail. Yeah. Now, if all this stuff has happened so precisely, and secular history confirms it, well then, folks, I want to put the challenge to us this afternoon. What are the chances, if everything from the head to just about the toes has taken place, what are the chances of this last scenario, the ten toes, not playing out? It's going to play out. And there's a stone that's going to come. And that stone is Jesus. He is the rock of ages. And that stone is going to bring to an end, once and for all, all the, the nations that have ruled this world. And then that stone swells and fills the whole earth. Yeah. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our God Amen. and our Christ, is what the scripture says. Jesus ultimately will come back at his second coming to Jerusalem, as the scripture teaches. To the very mountain he departed from, the Mount of Olives. And he will rule and reign during what the Bible says is a thousand year or millennial reign period. And at the end of it, He will destroy this world. And He creates a new heaven and a new earth. And judgment is coming. Now the Bible says we need to be saved. Sometimes we think saved from what? And, and, and even Christians say we've got to be saved from hell. The reality is you've got to be saved from God. Because God's going to judge. Yeah. Hell is just a component of the wrath of God. But the wrath of God is coming upon this world. But that was prophesied by Jeremiah. And no one would believe the man. Until the Babylonians invaded. Jerusalem was destroyed. And the Jews were taken captive. It's a picture. What happens in the last days of Judah happens in the last days of of the church. Jesus is going to come back. And so a challenge on the next slide to us is this. I want to talk to this thing of the day of the Lord. Almost every Old Testament prophet makes reference to the day of the Lord. John, Peter, Paul, they all make reference to this thing, the day of the Lord. Everything's, everything's predicated upon the day of the Lord. What is the day of the Lord? Well, the Bible says, and, and I've just got eight points here. It's a day when God's wrath begins to be poured out upon the planet. It's not a single day. It's a period of time called the day of the Lord. Included in the day of the Lord, it, it, uh, will, there will be the battle of Armageddon. And Jesus comes at the end of that battle back to Jerusalem. There will be the physical return of Jesus. Jesus then judges the nations, Matthew 25. He separates the sheep nations from the goat nations. I know we like to use that as an evangelical kind of message. But Matthew 25 is about nations. Sheep nations are nations who protected the Jews during the coming Holocaust. Goat nations are nations that abandoned the Jews during the coming Holocaust. And 
folk in South Africa, we're a goat nation. Yeah. We're anti-Semitic and we're pro-Palestine. Right. We're a goat nation. And this nation is going to face the judgment and the wrath of God. Not just individuals, the nation faces judgment. In fact, I, I don't know, maybe what we've already seen is the beginning of judgment taking place upon our nation. And every nation that is anti-Semitic. Then Jesus sets up his kingdom for those thousand years. And then at the end of the thousand years, there's a final battle called the Battle of Gog and Magog. And after that, there's a great white throne judgment. And I believe the day of the Lord begins at the opening of the sixth seal, where in the book of Revelation, on the fifth seal, there are all these souls that are under the altar. And John says, who are these people? And Jesus says, these are people who have come through tribulation from every tongue and nation. In fact, the church is facing more persecution today than it has ever faced in the history of the church. More Christians are dying today than have ever died in the history of the church. And we're going to face persecution. I honestly believe it. Yes. And persecution comes in many, many different ways. There's a hostility towards Christianity. Mm. It's not popular, especially when you preach the truth of God's of God's word. And then the sixth seal opens. And it's the first time in the book of Revelation, in the opening of the seals, that you hear the words, the day of the Lord's wrath has come. And then the seventh seal opens, and literally, all hell breaks loose. And so, I believe the day of the Lord is a period of time. Starting at the sixth seal, which could be imminent. It, it, it's, it's at the door. I believe the church will be raptured before the day of the Lord comes. Because 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 teaches us, Paul says we have not been appointed unto wrath. Jesus faced the wrath of His Father upon the cross of Calvary on our behalf. So we don't have to face the wrath of God. We have escaped the wrath that is to come, the scripture says. It's the most privileged thing. If you're not born again, you will face the wrath of God. doesn't matter how religious you are, how much you give, how many meetings you attend. If you're outside of Christ, you face God's wrath. Yeah. Yes. If you're in Christ, He faced it on our behalf. Thank God for it. We'll be taken. There's always an escape plan. Before God judged Sodom and Gomorrah, what did He do? He sent angels to rescue Lot. The righteous are never forsaken. If you and I in Jesus, we have attained righteousness not by our own works, but we have been given righteousness as a free gift. Amen? You and I will escape the wrath that is to come. We've got to make sure we're in Christ. Only those who are in the ark were spared the judgment of God. It's that same picture played over and over again. And then day, the, the, the ending of God's wrath, I believe, is at the end of the great white throne judgment. Folk, that whole period is pretty much about a thousand years. Yeah. It reminds me of that scripture in Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3, where Peter says, A day with the Lord is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is as a day. The day of the Lord is imminent. And so on the next slide, I've referred to some of these things already. The typology. When is the day of the Lord? And so, knowing these things, like God gives us some wonderful signs to know that the day of the Lord is near. It's a day of darkness, according to the prophets. It's a day of judgment. It's a day of vengeance. It's a day of gloominess. It's, it's a dreadful day. And so, to lead that challenge with us in the first session, the day of the Lord is in it. The question is, are you and I going to be ready before that day?